Whoa, that's not good. All right, so this is a new quad, and I just got done with all the beta flights set up. But is it going to fly well? Well, today we're going to talk about how what you need to set up and look for to vet your quad to make sure after a brand new build like I have here, is it actually built well? Is there any intrinsic issues that I need to look for or look at? Kind of put it under the diagnostic. So let's see if I did a good job on my brand new build here and if things are in good order for peak flight performance. So one of the first things you want to do is connect in Betaflight and go down to the black box tab here and go ahead and get this set up. Assuming you all get all that good to go, the next thing you want to do is set this to two kilohertz of logging rate. Uh, and the next thing after that we want to do is set this to gyro scaled. As soon as you arm, Betaflight will start to record black box data as long as there's flash available or there's an SD card inserted. So when you see something like that, I feel like it's an electrical noise issue. That's not good. So another telltale sign, and you can see here, I'm going to go to trace template setup four. When your motors peak and then you see this uh, spiking, and here's a, another huge telltale sign. Uh, if you do a slow roll or pitch, whichever, and you see this, so you can see here, this has nothing to do with high throttle i'm at zero throttle if it's you see spiking just when the motors are are going to arrest a move like the motor spin up to arrest a move you see spiking that could be like an electrical noise thing maybe you need more capacitance things like that but when you do a slow flip or roll and whichever axis is the trouble one and you see the spiking in the gyro like we see right here and the motors aren't even they're at idle then that it's just the it's just the the pitch access reading that pitch rotation is spiking up and down, like you can see right here. That's hands down, it's bad gyro. So the only way to fix this in a brand new flight controller is to put a new flight controller in. Ultimately, I replaced the flight controller with the JHE MCU flight controller. And you can see this is the results I'm getting now. So look at the difference on the pitch access. And this is, you know, all the same. You know, those low vibrations, you don't see this big differentiation between uh, roll and pitch. Actually, roll is a little bit worse than pitch, but it's still, roll's not bad. It's normal. So this is them side by side. This is the Speedy B F7, the original flight controller I had it on it. But this is what you want to see. This is just the same. This is just some line of sight. Again, 4S, 48K, PWM, and this is the pitch access. So just simply changing the flight controller you can see the, the massive difference in uh, noise improvements. Don't assume that you know an expensive flight controller is just good right off the bat. You need to look under the hood. I, I always do. I, would, I don't feel like I really know the quad until I just look at a little black box just to see how my vibrations are doing. You know, do I have any issues with the antennas? Are there motor issues? Anything loose? You can see through some of my other videos that I do with uh, the 10 inch and seven inch tuning and things of that nature, you're using black box as an analytical tool to see if just everything's in order uh, and you got to make sure things are in order before you're worrying about, you know, which preset you're going to load or if you're going to tune it or how to make it fly better. If mechanically it's a mess and just because it's new equipment does not mean, oh, it's, it's new. It's got to be good. No, no, that's not the case. So you got to take a look at it. At least that's what I would recommend. <laughs>